You'll be the death of me. Don't you know a place for everything and everything in its place? You forgot your platter, Mom. Hey, Mom. That's you, Robert? Dinner ready? People. Pipe down, will you? Where is it? Mom's got it. Hey, Mom! Stop. What's the matter, children? Uh, nothing. Sure? Just a little tired. Oh. Look, darling, I forgot. Here's a letter came for you. Finance Corporation. Just think, my little boy getting letters from big corporations. That night. Is Dad home? Upstairs, pounding away on his typewriter. Oh, Robert. Your salad, Ma. Oh, yeah. Did Dad get his raise last night? No, he didn't. But I'm going to speak to him about it just as soon as he comes down to supper. It was grand. See you tonight? Maybe. I'll, uh... Shall I give you a buzz later? Do that little thing. Bye. Bye. Right. Ah, that very fragrant. Hmm. White orchids, huh? Bad, Gary. Worth millions, I suppose. Now, Robert, I'm sure he's a very nice young man. Of course, I never cared much for white flowers myself. Hot stuff, Mom. Very passionate. Robert. To material? I didn't have time, Mom. He took me to the Biltmore for tea. Isn't that nice? You know, I always think there's something about tea that's so cozy and old-fashioned. <laughs> I bet the drinks were old-fashioned. Shut up. Now, Robert, I drank tea as a girl, and mother drank tea, and my grandmother drank tea. I guess I don't need you to tell me what fashion. The only old-fashioned thing about it was this dress I have on. I wish Dad would have enough gumption to ask for his raise. Maybe he'll be able to get something decent to wear. And I could do with a couple of new tires. I'm down to the now. It's much more important for me. A girl's whole future depends on the social connection she makes. I don't see why Dad doesn't snap into it. Well, if you both feel that way about it, why don't you go to work? Shut up. If I had some snappy clothes and four new tires, I could make some swell connections. I bet it'd be nothing to your credit. I suppose you think Dad's race should be entirely devoted to your needs. I certainly do. I think he should. Now, what's the sense of you children fighting over your father's race when he hasn't even got it yet? No, he never will at this rate. That's just what I said to him. I said to him last night, Ellery, once in a while. Instead of pounding away up there on a lot of stuff nobody will ever look at.
I don't oh, think that's Bob. any way to... Hello, Phil. Hello, Mrs. Cushing. Come in. Hi. Hi, Phil. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Phil. Hi, you lad. I'm not breaking into a family conference here, I hope. Oh, no. Ruthie's been to the Biltmore to tea. Skip it, Mom. Well, that's where you said you were. Hello, Tommy, my boy. How are you? Okay. Thanks for dinner, Phil. Well, I don't know. I'm afraid it's somewhat of an imposition. Oh, nonsense, Phil. There's always something left over. You might just as well eat it and throw it away. Well, Ruth, you're an eyeful for any man. I feel anything but that. Why? What's the matter? You must know it's about Dad's raise. Oh, did he get it? If he had, we'd be spending it, wouldn't we? Well, not all of it, I hope. Bob would need most of it. He's two payments behind on his car now. Who asked you to horn in? Uh... Why don't you sell it and let somebody else do the worrying? Well, I'd never have bought the thing if I hadn't counted on Dad's raise. If you'd taken that job Dad had Mr. Jefferson offer you, you'd be able to make the payments on the car yourself. Work for that man? I'd rather walk all the rest of my life. It's men like him that are plunging us into this vortex. He's a human monster, gorging himself with the country's goods, taking bread from the mouths of honest people. Now, Robert, don't be silly. Who's going to want bread that's been in somebody else's mouth? The only solution is to stamp out such money gluttons as the Henry Jeffersons, tear them to pieces, beat them down into dust. Is that right? I ask you, isn't it? Darling, if you go on like that, you're going to have a headache. Seriously, Phil. Don't you think Dad should demand his raise? In your opinion, Phil, wouldn't this be a good time to ask for it? No, I don't know. All times are about alike in the newspaper business, Bob. Yes, all bad. Hmm. I wouldn't say that. Maybe you better wait and ask him at Christmas time. Everybody feels so cheerful and happy at Christmas. Everybody feels terrible at Christmas. Positively savage. Well, I don't know why they should. It's a holiday. Trouble with Dad is he has no initiative. No, Bob. The trouble with your father is he underestimates himself. No, children. The trouble with your father is he won't stand up for his own rights. Ellery? Ellery? Supper. Right away, Mother. Everybody. Maybe you don't feel hungry after your tea party. What's it to you? Hello, Dad. How's Trick? Fine, Sonny. How's everything with you? Hello, Dad. Oh, five. Even. How are you, Phil? Yeah. Fix your hair. You know, it's good to see you here. Well, thanks, but I'm afraid I'm here most of the time. And Ellery, straighten your tie. Well, I was glad to have you. Thank you. You burned a hole in your vest. Many's the time I've told you when you were smoking upstairs like that. You ought to take your vest off. Well, sometimes I burn holes in my pants, too. Trousers, Ellery, trousers. Well, they were trousers when I bought them, but now they're, they're just pants. <laughs> <laughs> Ellery, eat your spinach. But I don't like spinach. Well, it's good for you. Now, wouldn't it be disappointing if spinach wasn't really helpful after all that you take to get the sand out of it? Well, it's got something or other in it that makes red blood. We got enough red blood in this family. You need, Dad, to ask for your raise. I guess what I need is a diet of raw meat. Why, Ellery, you always say you want your steak well Get done. Get it, Mom. Well, that's what he says. Really, Dad, you must see about getting your raise tonight. Well, you see, this new editor has gone in for a strict economy program. I was talking to Ed Hale about it last night. He thinks it's a bad time to ask for... That's just the trouble with you, Ellery. 
You're always letting everybody tell you what to do. Yeah, Dad, you don't seem to have the courage of your convictions. If you'd only listen to us. What we mean, Dad, is you never seem to think for yourself. Oh. Oh, Ellery. I'm sorry, Mother. I, I didn't see that glass. The trouble with you is you're always pounding away on that old typewriter upstairs, never thinking of your family. You just won't listen to anything or anybody. Well, I think what Hale said is a fact. That may be right, but Dad needs a raise. A man has to speak up if he's going to get anywhere in this world. That's the truth, Dad. If you'd only take our advice instead of every Tom, Dick, and Harry's, you'd get someplace. Well, maybe you don't ask for advice, but you let him give it to you just the same. What's for dessert, Mother? <laughs> Smells to me like raspberries. <laughs> Why, tell me, how'd you guess it? No raspberries for me, thanks, Mom. Oh, Robert. Excuse me. None for me either, Mom. Lucy. I don't care for any raspberries. Well, for goodness sake, if I'd known nobody wanted any, I wouldn't have bought them. Well, all right, Mother, I'll take some. Oh. How about you, Phil? Well, I... Oh, raspberries. Oh, sure. <laughs> That'll be nice. If you'll excuse me, I... I have a slight headache. Hmm. Can I get you something? No, thank you. Sure, you don't want any? No, thanks, Mom. Mrs. Cushing? Yes, of course, Philip. Go on, run along, Phil. He's got a headache, too. Oh. <laughs> Great dinner, Mrs. Cushing. Thanks. We're always glad to have you. He done now? That's just the trouble. He goes on the same old way. It's maddening, Phil. Is that all? 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 This eternal poverty. Poverty? I can't stand it any longer. Listen, dear. Let's talk this over quietly. I don't want to go on like this. Why doesn't he do something to get us out of this? Well, I'm sure he's doing the best he can. It's pretty hard for him, too. You see, this copy reading that he's doing now is hard on his eyes. Why does he insist upon getting his old job back again? It belongs to him. Why, for over 15 you years... You don't understand, dear. This new editor is a tough nut to crack. Besides, this is the newspaper racket. Anyone knows that the newspaper man isn't an, a, an executive by the time he's 50. He lands in the poorhouse. I wish... I wish you and Dad would give it up. I couldn't. And I'm sure he wouldn't want to. A man can make a living at this game, providing he has what it takes. Of course, it doesn't always include orchids. And orchids mean a lot to him. Perhaps, but they're nothing but a bad smell when they get stale. You can always get fresh ones. Not always. I think I'd be willing to risk it, Phil. What do you mean? 
I mean it. I mean, I'm asking you to quit the paper. Why, well, you're kidding. I was never more serious in my life. Not even for me. Listen, dear. It's the only business I know. It's my life. I love it. I couldn't give it up. You're sure you mean that? Absolutely. experience with one failure in this newspaper business and I'm not going to be silly enough to take on another. I'm sorry, Phil. All set? All set. Good night, Ruth. Goodbye, Phil. Good night, Ruthie. Come again, Phil. We always enjoy having you. Thank you, Mrs. Cushing. Enjoy the dinner. Good night, Mother. Good night. Ellery? Yes, Mother? Be sure you get that raise tonight. Well, I'll do my best. Well, Dad! Don't forget, Mother. A bottle of magnesia. Yeah. Sure, I'll bring it home with me. What? No, no, I haven't had a chance yet. Why, I haven't seen Flintley yet. No. No, I won't forget. So long, Mother. It's inexcusable. This Cushing is getting worse and worse. It's his eyes, Flintley. That proof with you. He can't help it. Can I help it? If he can't see to read, let him do light housework or something. He's been with the paper for 15 years, Flintley, and I consider him a very good... Look leader. at that! Tell him I want to see him. Getting on. Cushing, the old man wants to see you. Okay. What's the idea? Well, what's your guess? I'm going to tell that old goat just exactly what I think of him. Come back here, Phil. Don't do anything foolish. Well, what's on your mind? Lately, ever since you took over this paper, I've wanted to tell you a thing or two. Listen, son. Now, I... wait a minute. You're on the listening end this time, and you're going to sit there and listen while I tell you. You're no newspaper man. You're nothing but a... Oh, what can you expect from a guy like Lately? Right. Gosh, Ellery, it's a tough break. Well, they can't all be good ones. Maybe I've had my day. Don't be an ass, Ellery. Bentley just doesn't know a good man when he sees one, that's all. The old man couldn't use these, I suppose. Well, he's had them over three weeks. I don't think he even looked at them. Now, hold on a minute, Stodden. I... You'll do nothing. I'm quitting. <laughs> 
I wouldn't stay on your filthy sheet if there wasn't another job in the whole United States of America. You can take my job and stick it in the ash can along with my compliments. Well, some editor's going to have sense enough to see them. Yeah, you're darn tootin' they are. Come on, let's get going. Phil, you didn't quit. I should say I did quit. Nothing I've ever done in all my life has afforded me such genuine pleasure. All right, let's go. I've got to give three reasons why the present form of government will succeed. I can give you 50 reasons why it won't. Why, well, it says right here, nations have grown great and powerful by faith in the principles of government. There's an outrage for you, blinding the eyes of our school children to the truth. I tell you, a day is coming when truth will proclaim itself. A day is coming when justice will take the throne. A day is coming when capital will be abolished. A day is coming when the workers will come into their own. The day of the pro... pro... pro, pro proletariat. The proletariat is at hand. When might will be right. Are you one? One what? A proletariat? Certainly. Proletariat. Pro oh, here it is. Ah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> proletariat, noun, pertaining to the common people, low and vulgar, one of our lowest classes of society. <laughs> Let's see. As I thought, an antique. All the books they give you at these schools are antique. Children, children. Everything they teach in these schools is behind the times. What are you doing, Robert? Helping Thomas with his homework? Oh, that's not... Is that the magazine your father doesn't like? He doesn't like it because he doesn't read it and he wouldn't understand it if he did. Well, why don't you explain it to him, darling? Explain? He doesn't want to understand it. He doesn't want his eyes open to the truth. He prefers to grope along blindly. Oh, that reminds me. I must tell him to get his glasses fixed. Come on, now. Drink your beer and forget all about that job you quit. Quit? Yes. Understand? The job you quit. Say, Phil, can you picture me walking boldly into the bosom of my family and saying, listen, folks, I quit my job. Now, I ask you, Phil, can you picture that? <laughs> well, they don't have to know anything about it. That closing check will keep you for two weeks and leave the same time every night as if you were going to work. Now, what happens at the end of two weeks? Well, there are other papers in this town, you know? And by that time, we'll both have new jobs and no one will have to be the wiser. You know, it's great to be young and confident and in love. Now, we won't go into that. Just carry on as if nothing had happened. Well, I can't lose anything by trying it, but if I take this junk home, Mother will get suspicious, so you help me get rid of these headline humors that nobody wants. What do you mean, nobody wants? <laughs> you mean to say, you think you could do something with Something? Why, these are exactly what people want. Now, I'm going to be your manager. Thank you, Phil. And I'm going to make you the greatest humorist in America. No, in the world. In the world? Well, you know, Phil, the world goes round and round, so don't let it get you dizzy. But I was saying, when I so delightfully interrupted myself, who could possibly be hurt? You're not married, and I'm not married. So whose business is it what we do? Well, I never thought of things in just that way. I'd have to think it over. Thinking is something you mustn't ever do. Thinking ruins everything. Thinking is the wet blanket of romance. Well, good night. I must go in now, Gary. It's almost time for Daddy to come home. Okay, darling, if that's the way you feel about it. Gary, you'll call me tomorrow? Around six. That'll be fine. Good night. Be a good girl. Yes, mother. What time is it? 
own. Good night, Mr. Cushing. Good night, Phil. Don't forget that job you quit. We can work in my apartment. Well, that'll be all right if you can keep your apartment. <laughs> well, don't let's worry about that. Right. So long. Oh, Mr. Cushing. Here's Mother's Magnesia. Yes, it's me, Mother. to work again. I'll be back at the usual time. A tough night ahead of me. Ellery? Yes, Mother? Don't forget to do something about that race tonight. I'll do my best. Oh, Ruth, Gary Franklin's car is parked on the street again. Here's your prunes for breakfast. All Mom. right, put them in the kitchen like a boy. I thought I wouldn't have to go through all this again, but I'm quite sure I'm right about that fellow Franklin. I don't think you understand him, Daddy. I think I understand him a little better than you do. Now, Ruthie, I don't want to spoil your fun, but I don't want you to see him again. Good night, Ruth. Good night, Daddy. Your name's Franklin, isn't it? It is? Well, I thought it was to make it clear to you that I didn't want you to come around here anymore. Well, what's your objection to me, Mr. Cushing? Well, not an objection exactly, but... Uh... I just got the kind of a notion that you and I don't think along the same lines. Might I ask why you should have such a notion? Well, for one, the, this car that you drive. And for another, the, the way you spend your time and your money. Okay, by me, Mr. Cushing. Ruth's a swell girl and all that. There's a lot of swell girls around these days. That makes me simply furious. Well, of course, it never seems to occur to him that a daughter of his could marry a millionaire. It isn't that, Mother. Geary needs me. I'm reforming him. My goodness, he don't drink, does he? No, of course he doesn't. It's just that he's bitter. Bitter? Yes. He doesn't see any happiness in... What? In the future. Poor boy. Probably because he didn't have a good mother. Geary's so proud. If Daddy's insulted him, he'll never get over it. He'll think I don't want to see him anymore. And he'll go away on one of those awful tramp schooners. Well, I should think with all his money, he'd want to take a good boat. Oh, Mother! <laughs> Why don't you dictate and let me do the writing? Yeah, that'll be better. How do you get that way, big boy? Sorry. What's the idea of making a pass at a lady? I didn't. No? Say, what are you two guys doing here on this bench every evening anyway? Well, you see, officer, it's this way. I want to hear this bird do the talking. Well, you see, my young friend here was unable to keep his apartment. Yeah? Well, why did they throw him out? Well, maybe because I couldn't pay my rent. Shut up, you. Go on. Give us the story. Well, believe it or not, officer, that bench there is, is our office. What kind of office? 
Well, you see, we're writing a column for a newspaper. What paper? Well, uh, uh, just what I thought. From over at the labor hall. A couple of picket boys. Move on now, both of you. Now, wait a minute, officer. Here's a sample of it. <laughs> Here's another one. How do you like that? <laughs> Show him some more. <laughs> well, the office is yours. <laughs> well, that's encouraging anyway. Now, if we could only find an editor with a sense of humor. Well, 50,000 editors can't be wrong. Maybe it's us. Well, didn't you hear the cop laugh? Yes, but that was funnier than what he laughed at. Now, why do you say that? Now, listen, Phil. Let's stop fooling ourselves. We're not trying to make policemen laugh. We're interested in editors. Now, wait a minute. I'm working on a new angle, and I guarantee that it'll bring home the bacon. Well, I always did like bacon. <laughs> Does Mr. Blair know you, Mr. Starden? Oh, yes. We're almost pals. What was it about, Mr. Starden? Might I tell? Well, it's customary, Mr. Starden. Well, just tell him it's Starden from the news record. Oh, was Mr. Blair expecting you, Mr. Starden? Oh, he's expecting me. Thank you. Well, that new secretary of yours certainly put me over the hurdles. Hello, Phil. Looking for an interview for your paper? Well, I... I don't go in for personal publicity, but anything for you. I'll tell you the truth, Mr. Blair, I'm not with the news record any longer. I'm in a new game. I want to tell you about the most unique, most extraordinary, most stupendous... Save your breath, Stott. You know, this office is glutted with the most unique, the most extraordinary, the most stupendous act. <laughs> this isn't an act, Mr. Blair. This is really something different. M Mr. Blair, Amos and Andy are here by appointment. Tell them we're very busy. Now, wait a minute, Stott. What's the big idea? You're going to thank me, Mr. Blair, when you sign the contracts. I have the greatest personality in the world that I'm going to sell to you. Folks are tired of torch singers and crooners and patent medicine talks. Audiences want something new, something... Yes? No. Just a minute. Hello? No. We can't use them. Yes? I haven't got a stop Now, Mr. Blair's very busy right now. He can't talk to anyone for another hour or so. Yes, right. Now, oh, look here, Stoughton. You are far enough. No, this is just the beginning. Think of your father. Think of your grandfather. Why, this man Cushing is your father and grandfather all in one. Why, he's home, folks. He's the sort that sits on a nail keg in front of the old country store. Mr. He... Blair. Kate Smith. Will you give a fellow a break and go out and have some lunch? But I've already had my lunch. Well, go have some more. I'm dying. While you're about it, will you uh, tell the other pests to keep out, too? Now, look here, Stoughton. Now, this man Cushing, the old ladies are going to love him. The young girls are going to adore him. And you yourself are going to be glad to listen to him. <laughs> all right, all right. You win. Bring him around to the office at 2 o'clock tomorrow, and I'll see him. No, not tomorrow, Mr. Blair. Right now is the time for you to see him. What? Yes, that's right. A single white orchid delivered every morning. No card. No, that's exactly what I said. No card. Yeah, then, uh, huh? Yeah, send a bell to me at the radio station. Thank you. Gary. Hmm. I see he didn't take the boat after all. This is station KEY presenting for the first time Uncle Dudley. Uncle Dudley will talk on subjects close to the hearts of the American people. Friends, 
This is your Uncle Dudley saying hello to you on an important day for men, Father's Day. It's remarkable that almost all the talking on the radio is done by men when you figure how little chance they get to talk at home. You know, this Father's Day is a great racket. At one time, Father only got presents on Christmas. But along about the middle of June, the neckties would wear out and Dad would buy the kind he liked. Now, Mother knows Dad can't pick out his own neckties, so they started Father's Day, just so Dad could get a fresh batch of ties to carry him till Christmas when they could start the whole thing over again. But we've heard enough about Father. Let's give a little thought to Mother. Why, uh, mothers, why, well, bless them, there isn't one of them who gets half enough appreciation. That man, he was the first sensible talk I ever heard over the radio. But there's one day Dad don't have to depend on slogans to make him head man. That's payday. But most of the time, Dad's dodging trouble. Gee, that sounds like Dad. Oh, nonsense. Doesn't sound a thing like your father. If your father was as smart as that man, I wouldn't have so much work to do. I'd have a hired girl to do it for me. There's so many things Dad can do to get into trouble. There's the ashes he drops all around the house. And he's always saying the wrong thing, or he don't get home on time. Isn't that the truth? And then Mother just naturally has to scold. But most of us can remember when she wouldn't have said a word. But that would be back in courting time when the moon was more than just a little yellow something way off in the sky. I can remember when I was caught in, but I shouldn't be bringing up personal things. Oh, I wish Ellery could say things like that. Oh, Dad's got it all over that guy. What do you know about it? I tell you, it takes a woman to understand a man. Some folks think marriage spoils a career, and then others think you aren't successful unless you've been married three or four times. But seriously, marriage is a great thing. And no home should be without one. Station K-E-Y is to be a regular feature. Yes, Uncle Dudley. Station K-E-Y, glad you enjoyed the Uncle Dudley program. Yes, every afternoon at this time. Oh, Ruthie! Here's that little box again. Thank you, Tommy. Any card with this one? I think you'd call up Jerry Franklin and thank him. It's too divine, this silent tribute every day. Oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> What's the matter, Robert? Nothing. Sure? A little tired, that's all. Oh, I... Oh, Robert. Here comes Dad. Well, I'm going to find out right now where he's been spending his afternoons lately. Hello, everybody. Mother. Hello, Dad. Hello, Tommy. Mother, I got my raise, fifty dollars. Ellery! Jumping mackerel! Well, it's about time. Oh, Daddy, I'm so happy. Now I can make those payments on my hat. How about a new suit, Dad? Now, wait a minute. If you think you're going to spend Dad's raise, you're mistaken. I need more clothes than he does, Dad. Is this 50 a weekly or a monthly raise? Mother, where do you see that new dress I have in my house? Now, oh, listen, Ruth, gorgeous. I don't think it's oh, fair no, of you to talk about it. I've got no one that quiet. needs that. I'm thinking. But, Mother, oh, Mom, now listen, ain't that right for her to act yes, that way when yes, I'm yes, the one that really.
Dad, you want to hear something funny? Huh? You want to hear something funny? I'd love to hear something funny. This being serious is getting me down. There's a man making speeches on the radio every day. He sounds exactly like you. Is that supposed to be funny? Mom and Ruth don't think he sounds like you, but I do. Well, that's because they can't imagine anyone listening to me doing the talking. Well, if you make speeches on the radio, everybody would listen. You think I'm pretty much all right, don't you, Tommy? Sure. You'd make a lot better cracks than this other jinx. He ain't so hot. No? No, you'd be a lot funnier than him. And louder, maybe. Oh, Mom gets him on awful loud. So she can even hear him in the kitchen. Do you mean to tell me that your mother really listens to this fellow? Sure. If anyone makes a noise, she gets awful mad. Yeah, well, I know that. She's awfully interested in him, and she believes every word he says. Say, Dad, what do you think this other fellow looks like? Well, he's about... Now, how should I know? Well, you know almost everything, don't you? Your mother don't think so. Oh, Dad. Ma's all right. You bet she's all right. And that's the way I always want you to feel about your mother. No matter how fond you are of me. Remember, Tommy, that your mother is your best friend. But us men have to stick together, don't we, well, Dad? Sure we do. I hope these slippers stick together. <laughs> Dinner's ready. Come on, Dad. I hoped you'd finally get around to calling me. I was just waiting for you to come to your senses. How about it? How about what? How about a quiet little dinner in my apartment tomorrow night? Well, great Scott, you're old enough to go out alone, aren't you? Say you're going to a movie. Good girl. I'll pick you up on the corner of 8th and Broadway, 7 o'clock. Well, what do you know about me running into you like this? Come on, I'll bow you home. Now, shall we take the bus or the streetcar? I was going to, uh... uh a picture? Well, that's fine. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll celebrate my raise. I'll take you to dinner, you know, nice dinner. No spinach and no raspberries. And then I'll take you to a show. But isn't Mother expecting you for dinner? Well, I'll phone her. Tell her we're dining out. I'll ring off quick so she can't answer me. <laughs> Let me see. It isn't often you know that I get a chance to go out with any of my family. Well, we eat. Used to be an awful nice little French restaurant, but I remember, I remember where it was. Come on. Well, wait till I see what this show at the American is all about. Good, here's a review of it. It seems to be all about a sweet young girl that ventures into the apartment of the rich playboy. With, you know, the usual result. Disgrace, broken-hearted parents, and all that sort of thing. You know, it's a mystery to me how the movies can keep on telling the same old yarn over and over again. Girls nowadays are wise. They know all the answers. And these chaps with apartments, why, everybody knows. They get the decent girls only when they can give them a good enough sales talk. And when they can't, why, they just phone to one of the old standbys. And it's the old standbys that I feel sorry for. Poor little devils. They must have been worthy of respect sometime. So, that's a picture we don't want to see, do we? And now, young lady, I'm going to break down and take you to a real show. What do you know about that? Daddy, I think you're swell.
Who are you in mourning for? Mourning? Oh, oh you mean the, the new rag? <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. Wait till you hear this. Why are best terms for Uncle Dudley syndicate feature, Peerless Press? Yeah. And this one. Desire to effect arrangement for comic strip entitled Uncle Dudley. Also movie tie-up. Metropolitan Feature Syndicate. Yeah, and the rest of them. Well? Uh, looks as if we're going to have bacon for dinner. Uh, sir, it won't be long now. Why, those things mean thousands. Well, take a bow, fella. You're the one that did it. You know better than that. And another thing. We won't have to work in the park any longer. Well, for a while, I'd feel safer working there. Okay, but don't you think it's about time you let the family in on the big secret? Now, that's just it. You think you know my family, but you don't. Why, the minute they knew, Bob would want to write my dialogue, Ruth would want to tell me how to say it, and Mother, God bless her, she'd want to dress me up, like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the doctor. I suppose Ruth never speaks of me. Don't you think later on that probably she'll think differently about things? Why, of course she will. All young girls have foolish notions, but in the end they generally come to their senses. That is, fine girls like Ruth. And wait did she wait did she get a peek at you in that suit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I saw another one. A classy tweed, and it's going to look swell on you. Yeah, me. Don't be an idiot. I wouldn't dare go home with a new suit. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Bob. Hi, sis. Wait till you see this outfit. Well, what do you mean he don't work there? Well, I, I tell you, he just got a raise. Well, I... Are you sure this is the news record? Well... Well... Say, Ruthie, what do you think? I, I just telephoned the office. The man says your father doesn't work there anymore. How do you like this, Mom? Isn't it a honey? Well, that's ridiculous, Mother. There must be some mistake. Well, of course there is. I said to the man, well, he does work there, and he said to me, well, he doesn't. Well, I'll call Phil. He ought to know. Oh, Robert. This hat will make him sit up and take notice. Notice what? News record? May I speak to Mrs. Darden, please? Look at the pants, Mom. Look at the pants. Do they fit? Well, I don't know. Seems kind of tight in the seat to me. Mother. Phil isn't there anymore, either. What? And I called his apartment. He doesn't live there anymore. Lucy, what could those two be up to? Well, you never can tell. This screwy economic system forces lots of men into crime. You mean kidnapping? Racketeering? Yeah, something along those lines. Oh, my goodness. Your father never seemed to be that tight to me. It's a wonder Phil wouldn't tell me he was moving. Whenever men aren't where they should be, they're where they shouldn't be. With women. Robert! Sometimes, when men get to be Ellery's age, they start acting in a very peculiar manner. Say, what's going on over there? A lot of unemployed men in town, transient. I guess some professional agitators got them together to start something. Oh, I see. Now, comrades, we have a young worker with us tonight who has a very important message for you. Hooray! Quiet, please. Comrades, we are.
are gathered here tonight at a critical moment in the great stride toward liberty. How long are we going to cower here like dogs instead of rising and taking what's coming to us? Now is the time to strike. Now, tonight, throw off the yoke of tyranny. Start marching right now on the city hall. Action! That's what we want. Close down some of these factories where only half the force is working. Right. Tear them down and throw the other half out of work. <laughs> <laughs> Rise, workers! People all over the country will be afraid not to join us. That's the stuff. Put more fear into the people and then quit spending all together. <laughs> We've taken oppression. We've taken depression. What more are they going to ask us to take? Why don't you take a walk? <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you people want a vote, Bill, show maybe a friend out there can give it to you. Maybe he can at that. Yes. <laughs> Looks like trouble in the park. Gotta send the riot squad over right away. Now I may be all wrong, but it doesn't seem possible that a country which has survived prohibition Bob-head bandits, long-head legislators, the Wall Street crash, the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, trial marriages, and nudist colonies is going to collapse just because a few of us march on the city hall. <laughs> <laughs> no! We asked our country for a new deal, and we got it. We asked our country for a reemployment program, and we got it. We asked for a home loan in the farmer's relief, and we got it. That's it, he's on the way. We asked for protection, our liberty, our families, our possessions, and our rights, and for protection against war with other countries, and we're going to get it. me, Mom. I'll take it, Mom. Hello? Yes? Who's calling us up at this time of night? Dad. Well, what what does he want? He's in the hospital. Hospital? Robert, what's happened? Robert! What's happened? Tell me. 
He's been hurt. Ruthie, your father's been hurt. I'll go to the hospital right away. No. We can't see him. I can't see him? Why not? He's unconscious. Un... Oh, Robert. They'll... They'll let us know the moment there's any change. My fault. Station KEY. Uncle Dudley is at the Good Samaritan Hospital. You're welcome. Station KEY. No, madam, Uncle Dudley wasn't killed. Station KEY. Uncle Dudley is improving. Yes, the Good Samaritan. I told you it sounded like Daddy. Tommy, be quiet. Mr. Cushing and I will be married 25 years in September. Hello, Pop. Hello, Tommy. How's tricks? Oh, slow, Dad. Daddy. Hello. Ellery. Now, oh, now, Mama dear, don't cry. I'm all right. You sure? Sure. Oh, my. Hello, son. You know, I'm awfully sorry you didn't take that job Henry Jefferson offered you. He's a fine man. I know, Dad. I'll drop around and see if that job's still open. Well, that's a very good idea, son. Got my necktie on, haven't you? It's all right. Say, Ruth. Don't you think it's about time you told Phil to stop sending you those orchids? Phil? Sure. You know, it might get to be a habit, not a very sensible one at that. Hello, Phil. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on in, Phil. Hi, Phil. Hello, Tommy. Hello, folks. Hello, Phil. Hello, Ruth. Well, how's the big strike breaker this morning? Feeling better? Feeling better every minute. Feel well enough to eat spinach. Nurse! A little later, Mother. Oh. Your public is howling for you. Well, Phil's my manager. He started them howling for me. And I got a whole truckload of fan mail, too. Tell me, how does it feel to have such a famous father? Oh, I told him all the time it was Daddy. <laughs> Phil. Phil. You don't have to send me orchids. I guess it was a silly idea after all. Didn't I always tell you, Mother, if you bring your children up right, nobody can knock the props from under them? I think I'll make that my next radio talk. Oh, nonsense, Ellery. What you want to talk about? Who's hotel? Talk about foreign travel. Maybe you'll get Children, a leg off. keep quiet. Ellery, you must talk about fashions for men. We've got something especially nice for you today, Mr. Cushing. What? Raspberries. 